go to the Museum of Food and Culture, you'll learn many things, including how mindfulness and bread go together. Well, to talk more about it, we have founder and executive director of the Museum of Food and Culture, Rachel Wah. Rachel, it's good to have you back. Thank you. I'm excited to be back. I'm excited. We're doing this because yes. I've always wanted to, but I know that it takes its practice, right? But what exactly... Yeah. First of all, is a food, food museum, mm -hmm. and what's it all about? Yes, so our mission is to inspire curiosity, creativity, and community with food history and culture. And the way that I think about this is really just connecting people's experiences to the world around them mm -hmm. um, through history and culture. One of my favorite things to do is think about mindfulness as you bake, as you cook, and kind of just bring some fun back into the kitchen. Absolutely, and that's a good concept because I've always heard that food can really help Help you be a more mindful person. Explain mm -hmm. more about that and, and, and is that true? Yes, yeah, I think it's very true. Food is one of those things that is multi-sensory. It demands your attention. You can pay attention to the smell, the taste, the sound, the visuals, of course, and like the texture while you're making it and while you're eating it. And it really kind of requires you to be in the present. Um, yeah. It's a really good excuse for us to put down our phones, stop watching Netflix, though I love to. I know. <laughs> While eating dinner and yeah. just focus on what you're eating um, or what you're cooking. Okay, yeah. and, and which brings me to next time I cook mm -hmm. something, I don't think I've ever thought about actually being in the moment. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get it done. Yes, But yes. that brings up a really good point. So basically the process of doing something like uh, making bread can potentially improve mental health. Okay, mm -hmm. can you share any data on yes. that? Yes, uh, I don't have any data like okay. off the top of my head, but like anecdotally, I know that in my own life, just baking... Um, from scratch or cooking from scratch, really it makes me want to be kind of in the present moment. Yeah. And I'm not thinking about my to-do list or what I did during the day that was embarrassing or anything <laughs> like yeah. that. I'm actually being present, trying to make dinner as delicious as possible. <laughs> um, and bread is a great way to do this. I also do it with my morning cup of tea or coffee if you wanna do that. Um, it just requires you to really like think about kind of what you're experiencing in the moment and really savoring that taste. And leave that busy day behind. Yes, okay, yes. let's talk about how to make sourdough. Yes. You say each step can serve as a mindfulness exercise, mm -hmm. and I, I, I'm curious to see how this works. So <laughs> yes. take us through it. Yeah, so I brought a couple steps with me. Um, okay. So I have my sourdough starter, and yeah. again, the way that I approach this is very much like I'm an amateur baker, and so I try to really um, embrace the experimental kind of creative aspect of this. I am not trying to be exact with my methods okay. uh, most of the time because that's not where I find fun and find joy. Mm -hmm. um, so the first piece we're gonna do is feeding the sourdough starter, then uh, move into the kneading of the, okay. the little sourdough bread doughs that I started yesterday, and then of course eating. You gotta and eat of the course bread. eat the bread, which <laughs> I'm totally bread. okay with. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So do you need my help? Yes, Or please. do you want things to come out right? Yeah, oh no, I need your help <laughs> and it will come out right. Okay, tell me um, what I can help with. Yeah, so the first thing that we do, and one of the reasons I love sourdough is because it's so accessible. This is how people were making bread for thousands and thousands of years. This is not your commercial baker's yeast. You right. are using the starter instead of the yeast. Okay, so here's um, the starter. So this is my starter. Okay. Um, and I actually killed my previous starter about two weeks ago. So this is a new one. <laughs> this is a new one. Again, yeah. just experimenting, having fun. Okay. Um, so we'll take the cover off. Mm -hmm. And then what I want you to do, there's a little measuring cup in there, okay. is add about three-ish tablespoons just kind of a, a tablespoons of yeah this, so which three would quarters be three, of a okay. scoop mm -hmm. or so of flour right into that and then you're gonna add about the same amount of water okay yep about that yeah Mm -hmm. All right. You can't go wrong with this. Okay, so there's um, that. Awesome. Three tablespoons and how much water goes <laughs> Similar into Similar amount of water. So I usually do it by so sight. Yeah. Um, so three tablespoons. Sorry, did I just move that with I my I got hand. it. <laughs> I'm getting real comfy around here. I okay. love it. Two yep. and three. Three. Okay, and then you're just going to stir it. Okay. Um, to mix thoroughly, you can stir quite vigorously if you want. And I'm also gonna ask you, what are you, like, can you take a moment and smell it too once you're done stirring? I'm smelling it. Yes, yes. what does it smell like? Like, what are you experiencing? Mm. It, <laughs> like I'm gonna make some really delicious bread. Yes, yeah, it's got like kind of that sour tang to it. It does have that it. sour, yes, um, like sourdough for sure. Yes, and I think there's also like almost a little bit of creaminess too mm -hmm. to the oh, smell. Oh, and it's forming the, um, a good consistency here. Okay. Yes. 
this, yeah. And so this part is really cool because you feed sourdough once a day or at least right before you mm -hmm. bake it. And then when you look inside, you'll start to see the bubbles come up because what we're doing is feeding the bacteria inside of the sourdough okay. starter to make it very active and lively and that'll give us the rise that we want on our bread. Got um, so okay. as we go, we'll kind of start to see that. All right, then the next step, I wanna do the kneading. We have about 30 seconds. Oh, do you okay. think we can pull it off? Let's eat, let's eat. Let's, Are you yeah. sure, but what, oh, yeah. what, what would have been the next step? Oh, the next step was like paying attention <laughs> to the texture as you need. So that yes. eventually I have to turn it into that. Yeah, okay, we could do yes. some kneading quickly. Okay, let's, let's do it. All right, okay. so then I usually just use the palm of my hand, push oh. out and kind of use my fingers to pull it back in. And this is a great arm workout too, if you're trying to avoid the gym. Um, but you're basically just kneading it to get to a very smooth, lovely okay. texture. Very nice. And then um, once this is done, you'll let it rise for a little bit longer and then you'll shape the dough and then okay. it's ready to cook that and eat. That looks so satisfying, yes. by the way. Oh, I wanna do that. Okay, yes. and we're gonna cut this bread up and taste it in just a little bit. But for now, thank you so yes, much for being with you. us today, Rachel. Yes. Anyone, and you at home could also make sourdough. And look, mm. you can also learn more about the Museum of Food and Culture and sign up for a program experience or virtual exhibit go online and take your food personality quiz museum of food and culture.org